Hello and welcome back. This is Maximus, your instructor. And uh, we, today we're going to be talking about getting JavaScript values from form fields. And without further ado, let's just jump right into the lesson, shall we? We're down, walking down our little trail of programming through the woods. And here we go. We're going to right click, hit new document, empty document. And as uh, usual, if you are on a Windows machine, go to the link in the description of this post, and there's instructions there for you to create a document on your desktop. And if you're on a Mac, the same process. If you click the link in the description uh, below, I have two two different videos, one for Mac, one for Windows. But this is the way we do it on Linux, index dot html just like that and we're ready to go so we're going to open this i'm going to open with my editor which is gedit yours and on a mac will be like text edit uh, and windows might be notepad plus plus or something of that nature but let me go ahead and bring it over here and we're going to start off with the bare bones html document just like this html uh something else that uh <clears throat> I wanted to bring out that I haven't brought up on previous lessons. You'll notice that a lot of people will declare the doc type at the top of the page, doc type HTML. That is uh, yeah, absolutely fine. I mean, you don't, uh, the, the only reason why you don't used to have to do this, but ever since HTML5 came out, uh, it's, it hasn't been a requirement, but a lot of people, they put it in there anyway. So it's fine. We'll just leave it in there for this lesson, but we don't usually do that. But it's totally fine to put it in there. Okay, let's go ahead and put in our head tag. And let's put in our body tag. And let's go upside in, in our head tag in this lesson. We're going to give it a title tag. And we're going to say JavaScript. Getting values from form. Absolute beginner. Okay, just like that. All right, let's go down here, jump in the body. And I'm going to just grab this entire line, copy, and for search engine optimization practices, we're going to say H1 here and put an H1 here. All right, and it's just a good idea to do. We want an input field, okay? So we'll just say... Uh, Enter something here. I was debating on whether, whether I need to put a label here. We could do that, but I'm, I'm just not going to do that right now. So I want to code less so you understand more. So just like the in the lessons before, we put input, just like so, and then the type would equal text. Okay, now this could be several different things. It could be number, T-E-L for telephone, so on and so forth. It could be, you know, date, but it... We already covered that in the previous lesson, so I'll have the the, uh, the link in the description if you need to cover um, input fields. ID, we'll just go ahead and use our famous foo, okay? Use it every time. And then, <clears throat> finally, we're going to put value, and we're just going to have that equal nothing, just, just like so. Okay, and now, the next thing that we want to do is we want a... Um, um, a button so that whenever we click on it it gets the ID of foo and puts it into a uh, an ID so let's type in button just like that and then on click we talked about this in previous lessons too on on click we're going to call a function and you know what? we'll name that function get value because we're going to get the value of whatever's in here that the user enters and uh, so let's do this and let's try get value, V A L U E, because that's what this is all about. Getting a value from an input field. And then finally, let's go ahead and uh, make a P tag and we're going to give it an ID of boo, just like so. And this is where we're going to display the results that we get from the value after we click the button. Okay? Now, to make this all happen, we have to have our script. So let's go ahead and start writing our script. I'm going to drop down here for separation. S-E-R-I-P-T. S-E-R-I-P-T, just like so. And let's go ahead inside here. 
and we're going to make our function and then name our function get value just like that open and close parentheses open and close curly brackets and then we're going to come in here and we're going to set some variables like we always do so uh, let's say var y is going to equal to document dot get el oh, element by id put a space there that didn't need to be there open and close parentheses and what ID do we want to get? We're going to get the ID out of the value. So it's going to be foo. Or actually, we're going to get this ID, boo. That one. We're going to store the Y into, into this one here. Okay, so that's that's going to be the first step. Now, for, the, for this next one, we're going to be getting... Um, I'm going to write this out so it's a little bit more understandable. We're going to set a variable variable of x all right and x is going to be equal document dot get element by id and then we're going to target the foo and now we need instead of dot remember we do dot style dot enter html well this particular one is called dot value like we talked we touched on in a previous lesson so we're going to go go ahead and we're going to get the value of foo okay and then we want to display it in the the id of boo right here and so what we need to do is type in tab over y dot enter html and then equals x just like so Okay, so now it's going to go get, uh, you know, the, the variable of y. It's going to target that, and that's boo. And it's going to target the inner HTML of boo, which is right in here. And it's going to display what's an X after this button is clicked. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And we're going to load it up in our browser. And let me bring it over here. So let's type in something. I'll just type my name, Max, and I say get value, and nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Let's check this out for a second. Okay, we got to make sure that we put our open and close parentheses and get value. Otherwise, our function will not work, will it? So on click get value, and of course with the parentheses. So let's go ahead and refresh this right here, and we'll type in my name, Max. And there we go, Max. Let's type in Harry. I would like to name Harry. I got an Uncle Harry. How about Cy? There we go. So there we get. You know, that's how we can get the value of an input field. Now, what if we had two input fields? So let's go here uh, and copy line eight. And we're just going to come down here and enter enter something else. E-L-S-E -E here. And, you know, let's put some line breaks on that so they show on different lines. So I'm going to put a line break there and a line break there. And this ID, we'll call it Zoo. Okay? Zoo. And uh, we know now that we have to make another, um, get another value from the ID of Zoo. So we're going to copy this entire line. Copy go down to the next line let's paste it in there and let's give it a variable of z document get element by id and we want zoo and so here's the thing how do we display in our uh id well that's where the little plus sign comes in remember plus z so we're going to grab the variable of z which is getting the value of zoo up there and so i'm going to go ahead and save that and we'll reload it in our web page here. Okay. So enter something here. And we'll say uh, Max. And then we'll say Harry. Just like that. We have get values. We see Max Harry. But it's all one line. So how do we separate that? How do we, how do we make it, have it make sense? Well, if we come down here to where this plus sign is, we can actually do a space two quotes like this and then put another plus sign and then put a space in here okay just like so or you can just say and a and d 
All right, let me save that. I'll reload it in the browser here. And we'll do max Harry. Okay. Max and Harry. There you go. And uh, so this one is static. That means it's not dynamic, but this is this is dynamic. So we'll put my full name, Max uh, Moss. Maximus and Harry. Okay. So that's that, and that's how you get the values from input fields, you know. And it doesn't matter. If this input type was a number, okay, let me go ahead and save it. It's going to do the same thing. Let me put it up here, and I'll refresh it for you. Now, I can't enter um, letters, okay. I can enter the letter E because the E is part of a mathematical equation, right? So, But numbers, okay. So let's go ahead and put some numbers here. Blah, blah, blah. And then something else here. And let's go ahead and get value. And you can see that the numbers are there. So you could almost make a, a calculator. Okay? So let's just make a simple calculator with JavaScript. Have a little bit of fun with this stuff. Let's put number here. N-U-M-B-E-R. Okay? And... Uh, this time, these will be numbers. So we are going to take this off. And we're going to say right here, var A is set to X space plus space Z. plus Z. All right, and then we'll terminate that, right? And then right down here, instead of enter HTML XZ, we'll just put A, all right? So let's think about what's going on here. We set these two to numbers, and we'll say this, see this, plus this, okay? And and we'll say right here, and we'll put this in an H2. Oops. Let's go say equals E Q U A L equals this. And we'll put that down there so it shows up. Let's go ahead and save it. Bring our script right over over here and reload. And we'll say five plus five actually get value let's change get value we'll just say add numbers okay add numbers and let's go ahead and save that let's refresh it one more time this five plus this six equals 56 what happened well they're strings aren't they they're not integers okay so it's putting the number 5 and 6. So how would you add that as an integer? Okay, since these are actually strings that come across here, what we need to do is put the plus sign in front of each variable. Okay, so we'll put a, a plus sign here and a plus sign here. And that's telling the program, hey, treat these as integers, not strings. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And we'll reload our page right here. And now we'll do 5 plus 6 equals 11. Okay? So that's how you would make a little JavaScript calendar. And you did the same thing with, uh, you know, minus, multiply, or so on and so forth. All right, this is Max with the Website Pro. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, be sure to uh, comment in the post. And I look forward to working with you on the next lesson. Thank you. Bye.